another uh, one in the series of formal written methods. This one is an absolute cracker. I think it should go viral to rival Gangnam Style for uh, entertainment. It's <laughs> Is a long multiplication, so aimed at years five and six particularly. But those of you that are in year three and four that are really confident with your maths, you can have a go. Lots of different steps to get your times table knowledge right up and ship shape so you're ready for some long multiplication. We'll have a work through some examples. So keep watching, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be really confident with long multiplication. Hi, this is the next uh, in a the series on the formal written methods. This is number four, and this looks at long multiplication. So we've got um, an example here of a long multiplication, and you can see how we start to set it out. We're going to go through it step by step. It's quite a complicated process. There's lots of different steps. And it's trying to help understand each step and what we're doing and why we do it. So. We're going to look and work through this calculation just here and to show you the steps and we'll go through and delve a bit deeper into long multiplication. This is really aimed at years five and six because it's, it's quite a tricky process. However, if you're quite a confident mathematician in years three and four, you might want to have a little bit of a go. So we've got the calculation 28 times 23 and then you'll notice the difference between short division where we're only multiplying by one number and we just have one answer line. With long multi multiplication, we need quite a lot more calculations. So let's work through it. I'll just get my pen set up. So our first line, we're going to multiply our 28 here. We're going to start off by multiplying it by our units, by the 3. So I'm just going to write to the side in brackets 28 times 3. So to remind me what calculation I'm doing. So I've got 28 times 3. Now I do now do this in the same way I do the short multiplication. So first of all, eight times three is 24. So four in there, carry the two, so we need to just write that a little bit smaller. Two times three is six. Add the two is eight, so 84. I'm just gonna cross through that two, I've, just to remind me that I've used it so it doesn't get in the way. I don't accidentally add it to something I don't need to. Our next calculation on this line is 28 times our 20, so our 10 here. Now this is where it gets a little bit more complicated and we need to be careful. Notice here that all our 10 numbers, our 10s, will end in a zero. When we multiply a number by a multiple of 10, it will always end in zero, okay? So we put a zero in there as a placeholder straight away, so we know it's done, it's there. Then we can carry on the calculation um, as we would. So first of all, eight times two is 16, put the six in, carry the one there. Two times two is four, add the um, one is five, and again, I'm just going to cross through that one so I don't accidentally add it to something. Now, I've got 84 there is the answer to this calculation. 560 here is the answer to this calculation. I can just do a quick mental check there. 28 times 2 is 56, so double 28 is 56. So times 56 by 10 to make it 10 times bigger is 560. So I'm happy with those two calculations. I now need to add them. So you can see we've lined everything up nicely in columns. So I'm just going to add up four times add zero is four. Eight add six is 14. So carry the one there. Five add one is six. 644. So I'm just put that. Six, four, four. So I'm happy with that answer because I'm looking at roughly 30 times 20. So it's going to be a bit more than that. So a bit more than 600. So let's have a look at how we can break this down into its parts. So it's really, really important to understand in place value. So essentially, here's the method we're learning, but this shows you here the calculations we need to do, okay? So I'll show you on the grid first, on the grid method. So we start off here, 36 times 42, so we've got 30 times 40, we've got 3 times 4 is 12, times 10 
there is 120 times another 10 is 1,200. Play like that. 40 times 6, well, 4 times 6 is 24, times by 10 is 240. So you can see the importance of place value, knowing how to multiply by 10, 100, 1,000. 2 times 30 here is, 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 30 must be 60 then, times it by 10, and 2 times 6 is 12. So now I can just add those two bits up. So I've got 1,440 there, and then I've got 72 there. So if we keep everything nice and lined up, just add those together. That's the calculation I'm going to get. So let's have a look how it works on this method because it looks very, it will look very different. But I just wanted to show you so you understand the different steps. So if you remember from the beginning, we take our top number, we keep that whole. We first of all multiply it by the unit. So that's that, 36 times two. And it's really good, a really good idea as you're learning this strategy to do this, to write down the calculations that, that go on each line, just until you get really confident in the method. Then the next line will be 36 times our 10, which is 40. And if you remember from the first bit, that ends in a zero. So it's a multiple of 10, which means that this calculation will end in a zero. So I'm going to pop that in there, which is why I said the importance of place value at the beginning. Now let's do the calculations and go through them. So six times two is 12, carry the one. Three times two is six, add the one is 72. Cross through that one because we've used it. We don't want it to confuse us when we're then adding up. Now the next one, I've got to do 36 times 40 here. I've already put the zero in as my placeholder to reflect that that ends in the zero. It's a multiple of 10. So now I can just start six times four because it's six times four, 10. So it's going to be six times 40. Six times four is 24. Four in there, carry the two. Three times four is 12. Add the two is 14. And again, because I've used that one, I'm going to cross it through. So now I've got my two numbers there, 72 and 1,440. Add them up as a column. Seven, uh, two add zero is two. Seven add four is 11. Carry the one. Four add one is five. And one add zero is uh, five. It is one, so I can just check there. I'll just do it over here on this calculation. So there's two, 11. Um, five and one so 1512 okay we'll just work through one more example and again probably the heart the, the most common error that children make on this apart from getting their times tables wrong is they forget that zero so that's why i put it there don't forget the zero it's really really important so if you can remember keep the top number whole First calculation is to times it by the unit, so 85 times 4 there. And then our second one is 85 times 30. So here, 85 times 30. You can see there, I've underlined the zero, so I'm going to pop it in straight away because I know it's got to be there before I forget. Okay, so let's work through. 85 times 4 is. 5 times 4 is 20, carry the 2, 8 times 4 is 32, add the 2 is 34. So 85 times 4 is 340, and I can just do a quick check in my head. Double 85 is 170, double 170 is 340. Now on to the second part of the calculation, I've already put the 0 in. 5 times 3 is 15, carry the 1, 8 times 3 is 24, add the 1 is 24. So now I've got 340 add 2550. I'm just going to cross through my two carries so I don't accidentally add them up. 0 add 0, 0. 5 add 4 is 9. 3 add 5 is 8. And then the 2 add 0 is 2 there. So 2890. So that's long, long multiplication. Have a good go at it. Again, you can generate numbers using dice or cards, or you can just pick random numbers, have a go at multiplying them together, see if you can do them. Once you've had a go, check your answer with the calculator, see if you've got it right. 
as I said, a top tip is to write the two calculations you're doing here on each line, just so it helps you to build your confidence and understanding of the method. Good luck with long multiplication, and we'll see you soon.